Welcome to our liturgy at Maternity BVM Parish on this Feast of the Epiphany. We would like to extend a warm welcome to our parishioners and any guests worshiping with us today. We ask that for everyone's safety, you refrain from singing at this time, but pray with our musicians in the loft who will be enhancing our liturgy today through reflective music. Please stand. Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. On this feast of the Epiphany, we celebrate the revelation of who Christ is, the Savior of all the nations. God's salvation indeed knows no bounds. Today we pray that God empowers us to be like the light of the star we hear about in the gospel, individuals and a community that draws the world to the glory of Christ. On our way to the kingdom, sometimes we fail in love. We recall now the moments of sinfulness and God's eternally merciful love. Lord Jesus, light of the nations, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, glory of God, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, ruler and shepherd of the world, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, <coughs> and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. <coughs> o God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem, your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of the nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries to Midian and Ephah. All from Sheba shall come bearing gold and frankincense, and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Sing to the Lord. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit, namely that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. On the great feast of the Epiphany, we celebrate the mystery that all nations and all peoples are invited to sing the Lord's praises. For they have been called to hear the good news and worship the long-awaited Messiah with the gift of their lives. Well, that's the official line, but in our hearts we know that certainly that's true. But today's liturgy might even celebrate a richer mystery, the mystery of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. I would like to offer one interpretation for your consideration today, and it's based on the three major elements of the story, the star, the Magi, and the Christ child. We are the star. We, as individual believers and as a church, are called by our baptism to a noble vocation. We are to draw others, guide others, especially the most unlikely strangers, to Christ. Matthew is very clear. Those Magi were strangers, and they were the first ones called. They were the first ones called to witness, witness to the newborn king. I repeat, we are to draw others, especially the most unlikely people, the most unlikely strangers, to Christ. 
We are the Magi. In some ways, we're all outsiders. People of faith, for sure. But aren't we all pretty different? Differing accents and ways of dressing, differing worldviews and customs, differing ideas on politics and economics, differing theologies and differing images of God. I think there are more ways of being Catholic than we care to admit. Those magi followed that star. They risked, and they followed that star for a long time. They followed the light of that star until they found their answer, Christ. And then they prostrated themselves and gave him homage and beheld his glory. And finally, we are Christ. We are Christ in that story. By our baptism, we are christened, made Christ, made into Christ. Remember the old term christening for baptism. We are christened. That wonderful word that we used to use for baptism was so accurate theologically. By our baptism, we die and rise with Christ. We put on Christ. As a member of the church, we are christened. We become Christ. And in Matthew's story, we are Christ beholding that stranger. We receive the wonderful and valuable gifts, gold, frankincense, myrrh. We lay in that crib as Christ did, not wrapped in our jobs or our political views, our status, our egos, but we behold God's glory by our amen as we receive Christ each week in communion. Here's something to ponder as this Christmas season comes to an end. Three questions that might help us grow a bit closer to Christ. We are the star. How have you, how have we been a light, a guiding star in the lives of the people that come into our lives? Can we perhaps reach out in even greater ways to those in need, those on the margins, to the stranger? We are the Magi. The Magi brought gifts. So maybe another question for today would be, you and I have been estranged by sin, but we have gifts to offer the world. What are the gifts that you and I have to bring to the world, to your families, to your friends and your fellow students and co-workers? What gifts do you place on this altar as we begin the liturgy of the Eucharist each week? As a community, we offer bread and wine. But what are you, what am I placing on this altar with the bread and the wine to be transformed into the body and blood of Christ for this world? By our baptism, we are Christ. We are that Christ child. We have been freed from the tyranny and power of Herod, the power of sin. We are Christian. And so the question is, how broad is our vision? Do I see and receive the gifts that the stranger brings? And we know deep down, don't we, that all people have gifts for our church and our world. We have journeyed to the church bearing gifts, the gift of our lives, the gift of our hearts, the gifts of our talents. We leave church today and each week a bit more loving, a bit more trusting, a bit more healed, a bit more whole, a bit more renewed. And like the Magi, we each week we leave by a new route, the route of greater love and openness and peace, the route of a broader vision and insight. God of all peoples and nations, we know that Christ is the answer to our longing. Continue to shine your light into our lives and guide us on right paths as you guided the Magi. May we never lose sight of the path to Jesus amid the struggles we experience in our lives. On the Epiphany, there is an ancient custom of announcing the dates of the movable feasts. <clears throat> Oftentimes, it is done in connection with blessing and distribution of calendars. Well, I did a little research and found out that someone, some powers that be somewhere, put the kabosh on the calendars. And it wasn't Clancy Gurn and it wasn't Father Jason. So we don't have calendars this year to bless, which is kind of big disappointment. But I will announce the movable feast. So here we go. I was challenged to chant it, but I can't. My, 
Oh, I've got this hoarse voice. It's not, it's not anything serious. <clears throat> Next Sunday is the feast of the baptism of the Lord, which will bring to a close the Christmas season. A week from tomorrow, Monday, January 11th, begins the first period of ordinary time, which we will celebrate until Ash Wednesday, which is February 17th. Ash Wednesday begins Lent, which will last, as it always does, 40 days until Easter Sunday, which this year is April 4th. 40 days into the Easter season, we will celebrate on Sunday, May 16th, the Ascension of the Lord. And a week after that, the Easter season will end on Pentecost Sunday, May 23rd. We will then begin to celebrate the long stretch of ordinary time until Advent which will begin November 28th and extend until we once again celebrate the Incarnation, the great and solemn feast of Christmas, the birth of the Lord. Now, having seen the light of Christ, we come to do him homage, and let us stand and pray in confidence. For the church that it may vigorously embrace and celebrate all cultures and people across the earth, and that her holiness may shine as a guiding star to bring Jesus to those who are still in darkness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they ensure religious freedom for all citizens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who struggle to expand the horizons beyond the familiar and who resist or are afraid to reach out to those of different races, languages, politics, religions, or cultures, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families, that they may live in peace according to God's will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Joseph, Mary, and Jesus fled before the wrath of Herod and became refugees in Egypt. For all those who suffer from political oppression, injustice, or war, and especially for refugees, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all of us gathered here might welcome the light of God into our lives in order to eradicate the darkness of sin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful who have died, especially for Jackie Andrena, Carol Neveau, Harry Frechette, and Betty Bertrand, and for all the deceased members of Maternity BVM Parish, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, we add other intentions. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Wondrous God, you look with love on your creation. Bless us and those we love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be found acceptable to God, our loving Father.
Accept, O oh Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in a likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her spouse, St. Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Viator, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to inherit eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. And now with the joy of the season in our hearts, let us pray as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin 
and safe from all distress as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another some sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the body and blood of Christ, keep us safe for eternal life.
Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Bow down your head for the blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. And since in all confidence you follow Christ, who today appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. And so when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen. And have a great week. Amen.